Hi everybody, welcome back to another video. I have been counting down the minutes to do this video because things have been really busy since I got back from the Orlando Pen Show. This was my very first pen show that I attended, so I really wanted to give you my reflections and thoughts, pros and cons, and all those things that are swirling around my head. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Lori. This is Time with Tata. Tata is my last name. And on this channel, I talk all about my passion recently for mostly planning supplies and fountain pens and journaling. Um, it's filled a real important place in my heart lately, and I just can't get enough, which led me to signing up for my very first pen show. Uh, this was a small pen show, and this was by design. On the heels of the DC pen show, which is the largest one in the world, and then the San Francisco pen show, which is also a very large one international. A lot of people from overseas go to the San Francisco pen show. The Orlando one is only two years um, out. So last year was its first year in 2022. This year was year number two. So I thought this would be a very good first pen show for me, and it absolutely was. However, I didn't realize when I booked this that I was going to be in Tokyo, Japan just a week before the pen show. So I haven't even done all of my hauls from Tokyo here, which is like a completely different experience and I can't wait to share those with you. I'm definitely going to do a big Traveler's Factory haul and share my plans for my Traveler's Notebooks. And I really was on the hunt for a lot of unique inks in Japan. I bought three pens. Um, but I bought so many pens at the Orlando Pen Show. So let's get into Orlando. I did purchase the All Access Pass, which gave me three days. So Thursday evening and then Friday and Saturday were the show. Thursday evening, they did all sorts of giveaways. There was a pizza party. I showed up right as they were starting the giveaways and I could not believe the stuff that they were giving away. And it was really exciting to get to meet some people who I have become friendly with on the internet, people I follow on Instagram. It was fantastic. And I think generally it was just wonderful to see everything and everybody in person for the first time because so much of this hobby is making connections through online places like YouTube, like Instagram. So it was really fun to be in person to meet some people. Friday was my first full day at the show and I'll kind of break down what I bought on Friday and then what I bought on Saturday. I just wrote down some quick pros and cons for the pen show and these were just thoughts that came into my head last night. I'll get into these really quickly and then maybe I'll touch on them as I walk through the hall. So pros. I met some new friends, which was so fantastic. It's such a kind community. The second I walked into the giveaway room for the um, all access passes on Thursday night, I could just feel in the air how friendly everybody was with one another. People were joking around. And as soon as it got over, Claire Coco, who is on Instagram and on YouTube, came right up to me and said hello. And Right away, Claire, if you're watching, you made such a big difference in my experience there because immediately I just felt welcome in a place that was very strange to me. As far as like, you know, I, I don't hang around with a lot of pen people. It's really just me in my circle here. I have one friend, my good friend Marguerite, who humors me and she does a little bit with fountain pens, but really I'm kind of on my own. So it was really interesting to be in a room with all these pen people and to have Claire come up and say hi right away. Just made me feel so welcome. That was just the beginning of everybody being so friendly. I was first introduced to Claire on uh, Yoast Applebaum's show. Claire was on one of his recent game shows and she did pretty well. So it was great to meet Claire and her husband, Peter, just such lovely people. One of the huge pros for me was getting to meet with a nib meister and I'll talk more about that, but being in person, sampling the different nib grinds to see what I actually like. I'm relatively new to this hobby. It's been about a year for me. So I still have so much to learn and the whole grinding of the nibs and getting custom grinds, grinds was extremely foreign to me. And I I've just heard so many people talk about it. There are some pens that I felt would be so much better if they could just get in the hands of a talented nib meister. So that was phenomenal. Probably one of the top 
best things about being in person at a pen show. I made a big purchase on a vintage pen and it actually checked two boxes for me. I really wanted to get a vintage pen at the show just because I feel like you can talk to the people who are restoring the pens. I can learn about vintage pens. It's just an untapped area for me. Largely, I'm into modern pens, but I'm intrigued by vintage pens. So I thought that would be a good use of my time and money to maybe get a vintage pen and talk to people who are restoring them and really passionate about them. Also, I've been looking at Montblanc 149s secondhand because I, I just would never buy one uh, retail. And I've been looking on the real, real, all eBay, all the secondhand marketplaces, and I've just never felt comfortable enough to buy one. So I combined the two. I got a vintage Montblanc 149. Phenomenal experience with that. So I'll talk more about that. Um, the cons, it can be overwhelming at time. I'm a pretty social person, so it didn't really bother me. All of the people, and this is a small show, and being there on Thursday and Friday, it was nice and quiet. It was a great way to kind of get my feet wet and get familiar with the room before the masses came in. I think Saturday was pretty busy, but it can get overwhelming and it's very easy to get caught up. So a lot of the videos that I watch said, make sure you have a budget in mind. And 100%, I think that is really great advice to make sure you have a budget in mind. I went a little bit over on my budget, but not really because my husband surprised me with a pen, which was so sweet. And he actually went over the budget. I stayed within my budget, which was a generous budget, but I was just coming home from Japan, spent a fair amount over there. The reason I've been like, getting so many pens is because I had been saving prior to getting into fountain pens. I've been saving money to get a luxury handbag. I have a little bit of a thing for luxury handbags, but that desire and drive is dwindling very quickly because I enjoy my pens so much more than I enjoy handbags. I had been saving for a classic Chanel, pre-owned. So I had a nice little nest egg saved up for that, a few thousand dollars, and I decided I wasn't going to go for that, I was going to go for pens, which is why my collection has been growing so quickly. It's definitely going to start slowing down now because that money is gone at this point but that is what I have been using literally for this past year for all of my purchases. But you can get overwhelmed, so it's really important to keep a budget in mind. It's also very easy to make impulse purchases, which again, not only is it good to have a budget, but it's good to have a list of things you're interested in. So for me, the 149 was on my list, a vintage pen was on my list. I really wanted to make a couple purchases from makers who turn their own pens. It's like supporting a small business. I'm so fascinated when I watch other videos on YouTube of people who connect with these small makers. They pick out the body that they want, the color on the pen. It's completely customized, the type of nib that they want. It's always been fascinating to me, but I never felt really comfortable doing it online and just, I, it seemed like a lot of work. So it was really nice to be in person. And I'd connected with Bart from Zodiac Pens and he was such a love. And so that was the first purchase that I made on Friday. I'll talk about that. So that is really exciting um, to meet some of the makers. That was a huge pro, but it's also easy to get caught up in all of the beauty and you do kind of make these personal connections with all of these different makers, but you can't buy from everyone. So for me, it was sometimes a struggle to be at a table and be genuinely interested and in the design of things and want to talk to the people who are making the pens and they spend all this time with you and then I decided not to buy a pen and I felt really guilty about that. So I found myself avoiding some tables because I didn't want to give the impression that I was buying, but I would have loved to have spent more time. And I, and I think these all of these creators are well-versed in how this goes. You, you say hello, you look at the pens, you try a few, and then you're very smart to like take a walk, to decide if that's what you really want. Walk away from the table, think about your budget, think about what other options are out there. Um, but I found myself feeling bad about spending too much time with people and then not purchasing from them. And then I ended up not going to their table much, even if I was interested, which might be the wrong approach. I also think because this is a smaller show, you had that one-on-one -on -one time, which was wonderful. It, and the tables weren't so crowded, but then I also felt bad. That's my own hang up. But um, it, was, it was really fun to be up close and see everything. All right, so I've been talking for a long time. So why don't I share with you some of the stuff that I bought? I'm gonna start with Friday. 
what I went in for, what my focus was, and how I approached this whole thing, and I'll share with you what I picked up. One of the things that I knew I wanted to do was make a purchase from a smaller business. I had connected with Bart from Zodiac Pens, who I had first been introduced to through Karina on her channel, Karina Loves to Plan. She had bought something from Bart. I really loved the pen that she got and I was just intrigued. I loved the idea of Zodiac Pens. Um, so I'm kind of into Zodiac signs. I'm a Cancer. Um, all of my children are fire signs. I have an Aries, a Sagittarius, and a Leo. My husband's a Libra. I'm just into it. So that really intrigued me, and I liked how the concept of the zodiac signs were worked into his design. So I went to Bart's table right away, and he was such a love. I will definitely buy from Bart again. And I picked up my first pen. All right, I just made my first purchase at Zodiac Pen Company with Bart here. He is lovely. Hello. <laughs> so this is a special pen that he did just for the Orlando show and it's got this beautiful shape. This is the Pisces, Bart? Yes, Pisces. And, you know, I had to get the special one. I was eyeing also this beautiful ruby because I'm a Cancer, so he doesn't have his Cancer pen yet. Which one is this? That is Virgo. Virgo. <laughs> I just love all the shimmer. It's so beautiful. He's writing down some info for me there. I don't want to lose my pen. They are all so gorgeous. I was so excited to see these in person. All right, we got our first purchase under our belt. I got a broad nib with it. And look at how beautiful. The finial is so nice. I'm so excited. So excited, Bart. I'm excited for you. Bart, where did you say that you lived? Uh, Charlotte. No, would you say? What, what? <laughs> Between cornbread and collard greens. <laughs> I love it. I love it. This was the, the Pisces pen, which was new for the Orlando Pen Show, and I just loved the shape of it. I love the pens that have like the little bulb in the center. So for example, I'm just gonna grab my Scribo Feel. I love the shape of my Scribo Feel. And I just like these kind of chunky, bulby shaped pens. Sorry, every time I hit the counter, my camera shakes. Also my Mont Blanc um, Greta Garbo. This is a real feminine shape and it has like the little swelling in the center. So I like that shape. Plus he made this special for the pen show. It was my first pen show. It was the first time I had purchased something from a maker like Bart. So it just felt right to get the design that he had made specifically for the show. So I went with this. Um, it has a broad nib. I think it's a Yovo nib and it's just beautiful. The polishing is so smooth. It feels so nice to hold and it writes like a dream. And it's interesting because you're choosing something for the shape of the pen, but then the nib is something I'm familiar with. So you see a lot of Yovo nibs on many pens, unless you're buying it from a company that does their in their own in-house pens. You usually see a lot of Bach or Yovo nibs. I tend to go for broader nibs on more colorful, flamboyant pens. Uh, so for example, a lot of my sailor pens, pilot pens, I go with a more conservative, medium, fine, extra fine nib. And then on some of my Estabrooks and um, more colorful pens, I like to work with shimmer inks. And I think of it more in a creative way and then I go for broader nibs. So I did get a broad nib with this. I love the finial on this pen. I think it's so cool. I talked to Bart. I said, when are you making a cancer pen? He's working on it. So this was my very first purchase and I was so excited and that was on my list and in my budget for things that I wanted to get. Oh, I have to share this because this absolutely blew my mind. I met these three lovely, lovely women, Olga, Jesse, and Anita. They were there together, Jesse and Olga, or mother-daughter combo, so lovely. They were viewers of the channel, so it was so nice to get to meet them in person. We hit it off right away. Olga was sharing with me her Pelican collection. I don't own any Pelicans. For whatever reason, I'm kind of obsessed with this brand, yet I haven't purchased one. I was hesitant to buy a 400 or a 600 because I've been pining for the um, M800 in brown 
black. I actually prefer the tortoise over the brown black, but the tortoise in the brown is really expensive. They don't make it anymore. So that's like a few hundred dollars more than the black brown. So that's kind of what I've been eyeing. I could probably get the green or blue design in that classic, is it Sovereign, Sovereign? For less money, but I've been pining for the brown one, yet I haven't bought it. Well, Olga had this incredible collection. She took out her book, she opened up the flap, and there they were, just all of these absolutely stunning pelicans. She's been collecting them for years. And she had the Golden Barrel, which was, I think, one of the entry-level ones. It's like clear, um, almost like a milky, transparent with gold flecks in it. Absolutely beautiful. And she had two of them. I thought nothing of it. And I was just admiring all of her pens. And I turned around and she said, here, I want you to have this. Completely blew my mind and caught me off guard. She gave me this Pelican. She had two and she said, I didn't, I think she said she didn't realize she had two. And she's like, I know you like writing with a broad nib. And she gave this to me. I I did not even know what to say. At first, I'm like, I can't accept this. This pen is so beautiful. And she said, this is what I do. And earlier in the day, her beautiful daughter, Jess, had pulled me aside and given me this little accordion envelope that she had made. Um, I believe she makes these. It's super sturdy. And I was putting all of my business cards from all of the makers and all of the different tables in here. And also all the stickers that you get at the show. I have my Florida Fountain Pen Show um, sticker in there. And yeah, handed this to me. And then hours after that, her mother gave me this. I can't thank you beautiful women enough. I, I couldn't believe it. And now it's my first Pelican. And I wrote with it and I was like, oh my goodness, it was absolutely beautiful. So now all of a sudden I'm thinking maybe I would like the 400 and the 600. I'm trying to save money by not buying ones in between if I know I'm gonna end up with the M800. Anyway, thank you, Olga, Jesse, and Anita. You are such beautiful people and I cannot believe you gave this to me. I will treasure this forever. It's absolutely beautiful. I ended up getting a bottle of Robert, o Robert Oster. I call it Oster and Oster. I like to say Oster. I don't know the way you're supposed to say it. Cafe Crema, one of my favorite colors. They were there. Um, they also did the sponsored ink for the event. Robert Oster is out of Australia and they did um, Purple Dreams. And this color is so beautiful. So I was really excited for this and the Cafe Crema looks so beautiful in this pen. This is called the Golden Barrel. I cannot believe I came home with a Pelican. That was a gift. Thank you so much, Olga. That pen also came into my life on Friday. I'm watching the clock because I have to go get a tooth extraction. So I thought I'm not go going to be able to film this afternoon and I've been dying to do this video. So I thought I would film first go have all the yucky stuff done with the extraction, and then um, come home and be able to just have some yogurt, <laughs> ice cream, and I can edit this video. It's always good for me to have a deadline because otherwise I'll talk forever. Next up was my Mont Blanc 149, and this is also so very special, so very special, and I cannot stress how incredibly happy I am that I bought it at a show and just watched the whole process of this. So let me speak really quickly about this. I was at the Heinz table, another incredible maker, having a little bit of regrets for not buying one of their beautiful pens with the colored nibs. There is definitely a Heinz pen in my future. But the, the guy at the Heinz table, I wish I knew his name, he was fantastic. Dark hair, beard. I was talking about how I was thinking about a Mont Blanc and he said, if you're thinking about a Mont Blanc, you have to go see Sid over at Mike's table right there. I said, really? He's like, oh, really? He is the Mont Blanc 149 guy here. So I said, thank you so much. That's the other beautiful thing about these people. Instead of him trying to sell me one of his pens, he sends me to another table. The community is so incredible. If you follow virtual pens on Instagram, Sid told me that he's the guy that is always selling Mont Blancs. So before I get too much into this, I did get a clip at the show 
talking to Sid. Let me just preface it by saying that Sid had an entire like case of all Mont Blanc 149s, just to make it really super confusing for me. He said, try them all out. They're all good. I restore them. He's a medical student. He's 24 years old, the same age as my son. He works with Mike out of New York. Mike is such a character. He's been in the business for decades. He was awesome. Now he lives in Florida, used to be in New York. I just loved talking to these people and getting to know them. Claire and Peter Coco had bought their Mont Blanc from them the day before. They bought a gorgeous 149. Um, so I was just, there was a lot of love for this table. Um, and there was a chair right there so I could sit down and talk to Sid. So I sat down, I told him what I was interested in, and he let me try all the Mont Blanc 149s. Well, it came down to two. And to my complete and utter surprise, one that I really loved was an extra fine, which is so rare for me. It blew my mind that I liked an extra fine. And then I believe the other one was a fine. Came down to these two pens, one had an ebonite feed, one had a plastic feed. So I put it back on Sid and I said, sell me on one of these. Like he said, they're all great. They're all just from different times. He explained to me why he thought I should buy one over the other. So let's cut to that. All right, I'm here with Sid and he is a Mont Blanc expert, connoisseur, loves them. So I'm looking at the 149. He, I, he's not an amateur in my eyes. I've been looking at all of these, and this is Mike over here? Yeah, Mike Goon. Yes, these guys are amazing. So we got two 149s here, yeah. but both different. This is a tri-toed modern 149, probably in the early 2000s. Mm -hmm. And here, we have an 18 karat, that's also 18 karat gold, but this is an 18 karat gold bitone nib, and this is from the early 90s with a split ebonite feed. So that indicates that it's a transitional era 149. It's got an extra fine nib on it, and this is just a beautiful piece right here. So I am between these two pens, and I never choose extra fine, but I really do like that one. But I'm torn, so I'm asking Sid which one he would pick, and I think he's going, I think I know. Where he's going. In my opinion, <laughs> as much as I love the modern, I have one in my own personal collection. I love tri toe nibs. I'm gonna have to go with the Ebonite Feed Transitional Era 18K. <laughs> I think you'll be very happy with it. But yeah, so the Ebonite Feed, the ink is keeping up well. I'm seeing how you're writing with it, and I'm seeing your face when you're writing with <laughs> it, and it's just great. Um, so the ebonite feet is kind of like the the deciding factor. For yeah, you. the the broad the broad shoulders, 18 oh, karat right. gold. Oh, I like the it's just uh, it's just in great condition. It's just amazing. Okay, all right, sold, sold. <laughs> I want to get it. Great. There's a door prize happening now, so we can't talk. We're just going to watch Sid work his magic. <laughs> That's a ceiling from the 80s and 90s. Is yeah, this pig. This pig it's like latex ceiling. Yeah. Kathy Cantrell. Kathy Cantrell, are you here? It looks like a rubber band. This is a piston removal tool for the 149. It's a special tool that you have to get. You're, you'll never catch me doing this stuff. Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> I'll call Sid if my Mont Blanc needs any help. Yeah, that's what I do. Yeah. Did we get her to buy a pin yet? Yeah, she gave this one. Sid is literally taking my pen apart and putting it back together. This is like better than I even thought. <laughs> Got it. Oh, that's pretty. What is this? This is my one. Uh, I'm trying to think of the name of it. It'll come up in like 10 minutes. That's gorgeous. Yeah, the show bird burns on this. That finial's awesome. Yeah, we'd rather try it for It was so hard for me to actually make a decision, so I really valued the fact that Sid helped me out with this. And I was definitely leaning towards the ebonite feed because I love an ebonite feed in my Leonardo's. It's like one of my favorite things. So the fact that this had an ebonite feed made a difference and here it is. Here is my Mont Blanc 149. Pricing was totally reasonable, less than what I see online for some of these, and he completely disassembled this pen. Did you see how he had the adhesive 
that was looked like an eraser, like a gummy eraser that he just pulled off. He put on a new adhesive. He, he took this entire thing apart. I left it with him for like 40 minutes because he wanted to really get in there and clean the barrel for me. I noticed a couple marks at first. So he said, I can take care of that. Um, he had a machine, like an ultrasonic machine or something, but he couldn't plug it in at their station. So he was doing it by hand. So it was taking a little bit more time. But to watch this kid pull this apart and just have so much passion for Mont Blanc, reassemble it in front of me, know so much about it. So I ended up with the early 1990s, and I always say 90s is my decade. I graduated from high school, graduated from college, moved to, moved to San Francisco, got married, had my first child, bought my first house. The 90s were my decade. So I was happy that this was from early 90s. It had a split ebonite feed, it had an 18 karat gold nib, which I liked, and it had the, um, let's see if we can get me out of there. There it is, isn't she gorgeous? It had a bi-colored nib. The other one was a tri-colored nib. As long as I get the two tones, I was happy. This is just absolutely beautiful. I'm loving how it writes. My one regret of the show, my single one regret, my shirt's falling off here. I'm getting so excited talking about pens. My clothes are falling apart. My one regret is not having Kirk Spear work on this. The nib is beautiful. It writes beautiful. Sid did such an incredible job, but I'm like, I've come this far. I got this restored Mont Blanc 149. So much love. Like, go over to the Nib Meister and just have him tune it. I didn't even want a special grind on it. It writes pretty wet for an extra fine, but given what how I love things, I think Kirk probably could have spent three minutes on this and it would have been like total chef's kiss. So that is my one regret of the show because I had all day Saturday, but it writes beautiful. I'll show you a writing sample, but let's talk about the nib grinds that I had done. I brought three pens there and he absolutely resurrected these pens. One was an Esterbrook SD in lilac that I bought secondhand and had an extra fine nib and it just was too extra fine for me. It was a very dry writer and it was skipping a little bit, but I love this. They don't make this lilac anymore. I was able to sit at his table as well and he had a bunch of Twisbees with different grinds that he offered. The one that I liked the most was the Waverly. I thought it was really cool. The nib pops up a little bit on the end. I don't know if you can see it here. Um, so not quite like a fude that goes way up, but it has this little bump up that I thought was really interesting. At first I said to him, what is your specialty? Because I think he does the needlepoint for Esterbrook. Esterbrook partners with several nibmeisters. They have their own nib grind that you can have on an Esterbrook pen. So I said, why don't I do the one that you're famous for? And he said to me, which I thought was such great advice. He's like, you can order one of those from Esterbrook. I'm in front of you to do what is custom to you. Of course I can do that grind. You can get that grind anytime though. We're here. Why don't you write? Let me watch you write. You pick out what you think you will love. He goes, you seem to be leaning towards the Waverly. So that's what I did. Such great advice. Thank you, Kirk. So that's what I got. Fantastic. The other pen that they literally brought back to life, and I think this is the one that I'm most excited about, and I can't find it, is my Visconti Venus. It was one of the very first like expensive pens that I bought. I ordered it online in a fine before I knew what I liked, and it just never wrote well for me. I brought it to the Fountain Pen Hospital in New York City. They messed with it a little bit. It never really wrote the way I liked. Then I dropped it. It cracked. I lost the bottom piece to it. I'm like, this pen is cursed. And I was ready to let it go. I decided to give it one last try, bring it to Florida, put it back together. You can see a teeny tiny hairline little fracture in it. But at this point, it's just part of this pen's journey. He just made it such a wet writer and I love it so much. I keep grabbing it. It also has a metal section, which I don't typically prefer, but I cannot tell you how phenomenal this pen is. And right before I left for Japan, I had made another impulse pen purchase on the secondhand market with this Meora. It's an Italian pen, retails for over five or six hundred dollars. I love, love, love the colors in this for fall. I bought it impulsively because it was under a hundred dollars. 
but it has a Knox something nib on it, which I think is just like another like Bach or Yovo nib. So it doesn't have the 14 karat gold nib on here, which makes this pen so expensive. I was a little disappointed in my impulsive behavior, but I love the pen. It's a broad writer, but it was skipping. It was having hard starts. It just wasn't really performing. Um, so he also worked on this and it's so beautiful now. <laughs> I don't think we've decided yet. Haven't decided yet? Oh, this is really nice. Oh, that's good. Some people like Nib Doctor, but I think somebody else uses that term as well. All right, he's doing a grind called the Waverly on this, which is really fun. And it was one that I really enjoyed when I tested it. All of his different nib grinds are right there. So knowing I'm not much of an extra fine person, he t we, we're going with the Waverly. He just tuned these and they're amazing. You know what I'm saying? I've honestly been waiting so long to have one of these done because I'm just, I just never took the time to like send, send it in it the out. mail and do all that, yes. you know? 100%. So I've just been like yeah. finding the ones that need help. Here's Kurt. He just fixed these three and they are so beautiful. I did the Waverly on this. So much fun. All right. Thank you, Kirk. <laughs> I wish I had done more with Kirk. So I wish I had had him work on my um, Mont Blanc 149. And I also recently purchased a Leonardo in the matte finish, the primary manipulation through Gold Spot pens. All they had was a stub nib. And I kind of wish I had had him do like a cursive italic on that. The stub is awesome. All of my Leonardo's write really well but i think that would have been a cool pen to have him work on when he just tuned a pen it was about 25 dollars. it cost me a hundred dollars to have him do the special grind on the lilac pen and to tune this one and my visconti which if i find it i'll show it to you hundred dollars so i think it was 50 55 dollars for the custom grind and then about 20 25 dollars for the other two i probably could have had a few more pens done for maybe 75 dollars which seems like a lot of money but when you're spending a couple hundred dollars on pens and then they're not working the way you want them to i mean they work but as you move along in this journey you realize what your tastes really are so i wish i had done more nib grinds because now i'm home if i want it done i have to get on a wait list i have to send my pen out i have to pay for shipping i can't be there to try it in the moment so if you go to a pen show number one recommendation in my opinion is if you have pens that you would love them to work on, it is so worth it. And Kirk did a fantastic job. There was also a guy by the name of Matthew there, I believe. I should know his last name, but I don't. And I kind of wish I had him also work on a pen because it's just nice to get to know different nibmeisters. So that was fantastic. That first day I got my Pisces pen from Zodiac Pens. I got my Mont Blanc. Olga gave me my first Pelican, which was absolutely amazing and then i had some nib work done they also have events at night where people casually get together i think if i go to another pen show i will carve out some time to do that because i think it's just such a fun experience to meet other people but i was with my husband who was amazing and such a trooper but i did feel bad saying like oh i'm gonna go hang out at the bar and play with my pens for five hours when we were down in florida together so i missed out on that part the next time I go to a pen show, I'm definitely going to carve out some time to just maybe share my pens with other people, maybe swap a couple pens and just kind of try out people's different nibs and stuff, like just really geek out with other pen people. I think that would be really fun. And I missed that in this, even though there was time to do that. On Saturday, Estherbrook hosted um, Estherbrook After Dark. And again, I didn't take the time to go to that event because Jay and I were going out to dinner. We were staying one night at the hotel where the pen show was being held. And then the second two nights we went to Saratoga Springs because we're Disney Vacation Club members. We stayed at Saratoga Springs. That was awesome. It's walking distance to Dis downtown Disney area, which was great. So we had an awesome time aside from the pen show but I would in the future maybe just go solo and just really 
do all the things with all the pen people because I just think you don't have many opportunities to do that. I would love to join like a little pen club in Boston. So maybe that's in my future. Okay, let's talk about day two now. Day two, um, I kind of knew the ropes. I knew the tables. I saw things that I was thinking about. The wheels were turning. Day two ended up being a lot more purchases than I had anticipated only because I got that feeling that, oh my gosh, this is it. This is the last day. What am I going to do? I don't want to miss out on things. So I definitely got sucked in by that, but honestly, no regrets. There's nothing that I took home that I regret buying. So that is a good thing. Day two, I did sign up for a workshop with Esther Brooke. I had the opportunity to meet Vanessa Langton, who is just so much fun. She taught the class for Wax Seal and it was a hundred dollar fee for the class but we got so many supplies i have bags of stuff um, but this is the set we got this nouveau blue um, wax seal stamp oh god look at how beautiful this is i just love these colors i was able to pick this wax piece she had a variety of different colors i got extra ones of these i got the little wax beads i got the the spoon and the heating unit she gave us so many supplies we got markers we got glitter so much and then also Brad from The Pen Addict was there and he was taking some photographs and filming for Estherbrook and Vanessa during the class. So it was really nice to chat with Brad. It was, it was just awesome. I'm so glad that I took a class and that's another thing I would recommend. Take some time to leave the ballroom and play with some of your stuff. So for example, if I had inked up my Mont Blanc, and, and don't get me wrong, this Mont Blanc writes so beautifully, but I think if I had taken a little time, I would have said, hmm, maybe I should have Kirk work on this and just make it like a little more like Lori style, which I know I will do one day, but I can't stop writing with my Mont Blanc. I haven't put it down. It's been awesome, but I do think it's fun to kind of step outside that whole table set up where you could test different inks and play with some of your stuff because you might want to tweak something or you might say, oh, I love this pen, but I don't have a good ink that goes with this. Why don't I go in and play, get an ink that matches? Like, I just think if you step away from the ballroom, whether you go to your hotel room, take your pens out and go have lunch, sit with a couple friends. They had a huge seating area, like on your way into the ballroom. So there were definitely opportunities to take a break, but taking a workshop was also a way to take a break and just use the stuff and meet people. I think there's so much time spent thinking about what the next pen is that we want, the next ink, the next case, whatever it is. That's how things go and you see all these beautiful things on YouTube. It's nice to just use the stuff, to take a step back and enjoy it. And that's what I did with this workshop. We were able to pick the little, um, the seals that we wanted. I grabbed this Esterbrook one because it was just a nice memory. I love Esterbrook pens. I think I have like six or seven of them. I added one on this trip, which I didn't plan on doing. I knew I wanted to visit the Esterbrook table and I was thinking maybe I'll get a case or something. I've been debating on the Nouveau, the Blue Nouveau or Nouveau Blue for a while. And once it was in front of me in this case, I was like, oh, this is the kiss of death. I'm gonna have to go buy that pen now to match, which I did. I have some footage from the class, so I'm sure I will put that in. This is my wax seal class. That's Miss Lisa. We met this week. <laughs> What's your name? Iana. Iana? That's beautiful. Hi. Mine's still melting. Yeah. I want to make sure I don't burn anything. Mine's like, I'm putting everything away. What's your name? Dina. Hi. Hi. <laughs> and you have quite a, a bit of liquid uh, viscosity going on here. You can tap some glitter into that, and that's what the toothpicks are for, so you could stir it in. I have toothpicks this time. We didn't have them last, the last class. It was a little weird. So yeah, mine's still taking its sweet time. We're just waiting for that to melt. Also, I forgot to mention, because I was one of the first 50 people to register for an all access pass, I got, this is, this means I get the free ink. So that Robert Oster ink that I shared with you, um, I got that for free, which was great. And I think it was 50 or $55 for the weekend pass. So these are my little seals that I made. 
you could combine different colored inks, uh, different colored wax, and then you could add sprinkles to it. So this was so much fun. I really got to know Vanessa, who I absolutely loved. She was so much fun. She's so funny. She has a dry sense of humor, which I really appreciate. Claire was in that class with me as well. She was sitting next to me with her beautiful niece. And then I have to mention Lisa, who was another person who was a viewer who I connected with, and she was so much fun. She bought a pen from Bart, and then she was in the class with me. So we kept crossing paths, and she was just an absolute absolute beautiful person and it was so nice to spend some time with her in that class as well. After I went to that class, I went directly to <laughs> the Esterbrook table and I bought an Esterbrook pen. Here's the Esterbrook station. Here's Vanessa working her magic. I think I am going to get another Esty just because I can't get enough. I'm gonna get their blotter pad over here too, which is really nice. I'm gonna get this one, I think. You know, do the whole Esterbrook thing. They were selling these for $17.99, but because they didn't have cases, they gave this little pen sleeve to me as a gift, uh, which was so nice. Um, so here's my pen, and it looks so beautiful with my wax seal now. You know, because these things have to match, right? No, I had been on the fence for this for a while, but I knew I wanted to get it with the journaler's nib. I asked if I could get the journaler's nib. They did not have one. So what they did, which was incredible, um, was they let me take home this pen. I got to pick the nib that I wanted. I chose a medium nib. because That's like my everyday writer nib that I go to but they're sending me a separate journaler's nib. So I'm basically getting two nibs for the price of one, plus they gave me the pen sleeve, plus they had a bookmark in the, the shape of a nib. It's buried somewhere on my desk, but I'll show you. So I also got this beautiful brass page holder as part of it. So for the price of the one pen with the journaler's nib, I also got an extra nib, I got the case and I got the bookmark. So I was so happy that I visited the wonderful folks over at the Esterbrook table. They're phenomenal. I can't get enough Esterbrooks in my life, um, but I think I'm good for now because now coming home, this one, it's like getting a new pen when you have it worked on by a Nibmeister because I'm reaching for these pens so much more. And of course this pen. One of the brands that I've been really wanting to try out is Navilar, formerly known as Narwhal. I wanted the Nautilus as much as I love, I think the Voyager series or the Vacation series, they're absolutely beautiful. I love the Horizon series. I wanted the Nautilus. There's like a smoky pink one that's out right now that's really nice, but it's a little on the pricier side. And I visited Jimmy, who was a hoot. I went to his table. I don't know what his last name is or what his company is called, but he was great. And he had this, and he was selling this for $140 or $150. And he said, but I'll give it to you for $100. And I was like, sold, because I really wanted to try one of these. I love the Nautilus because I just love that ink window right there. And also it was on my list to get a green pen. I have all these beautiful green inks and I have a variety of different colored pens. I don't have a green pen. So this was two of those things at a great price. This is a broad nib. Jimmy didn't know what nib it was and I didn't know. He's like, go over to the Navilar table and ask them. And so the guy um, who worked for Navilar looked at it he said that's a broad nib, but I would say it's a, a thinner broad nib. I would say it's like between a medium and a broad, but it writes beautiful. So excited about this as well. Then my husband surprised me, which I didn't get until after the show. We have a thing. We're both Italian and he's like, I only want to buy you Italian pens. And I said, I'm fine with that because there are so many Italian makers. Like you can be buying me pens for a very long time, but he's latched on to Leonardo. So he got me the Fiore um, Grande for Valentine's Day. He bought me the Momento Zero Grande in sand with a gold nib for our anniversary. And then he bought me this one from Drum Goals. Um, he was like, do you want me to buy you a pen? And I said, yes, but I want you to surprise me. I want to see what you would pick out. This is what he went with. He, did, he definitely 
got a vibe for what I liked because we did a couple walks. But this table, Dromgles, I spent a lot of time at this table. I bought some ink there with Jesse, who's like their ink specialist. I got Cool Gray Mont Blanc ink for my pen, which I like, but I think I like a little bolder color, but this Cool Gray is phenomenal. And then I also got this Ferris Wheel Press Candy Marsala. I was trying to get the, is it the Le bon ink that I tested in my Scribo pen? I did a video on that. I only had a sample of it. Is it Aphrodite? What is it? I can't remember. Anyways, they didn't have it, so we were trying to find a comparable ink, and we came up with Candy Marsala, which I really like. So my husband went over when I wasn't there, and he got this. And it is so beautiful. And I also think that Cafe Crema would look gorgeous in this pen as well. There's also a color called Three Kings that was in the Ink Vent calendar from 2022 that I might try in here. But this is just the regular size. It's not a grande, which I'm excited about. I just, I like mixing it up. Like I have one oversized SD, the rest are normal size. Um, and then I have the Momento Zero Grande and the Fiore in the Grande size. So I was happy to get this and look at the sparkle in this. Jay's a big yellow guy too, and it's just so beautiful. So I didn't think I was getting this pen. So that was a surprise. And plus the Pelican, I ended up with so many pens, but the last pen that I bought, and I think I do have to wrap this up soon, is this beautiful pen by the Tailored Company. I had walked by their table so many times. I also really liked their honey bee, the honeycomb design, but I love faceted pens like my Scribo. And this one is just so beautiful. I think this is the Asher pen and it's in the Tiffany, um, that's the material. The material is so beautiful. And this is what I love about these shows is seeing these gorgeous pens that people make. It's fascinating. So look, at the facets on this. It's absolutely beautiful. And I made this purchase at the end on a Saturday. I walked over with Vanessa. She's like, do you have a Vanessa code? And they kind of gave me a great deal on this. It's so absolutely beautiful, writes beautiful. I got this, of course, with a broad nib. My final purchase of the day here at Tailored Pen Company. I fell in love with these beautiful, this right here with the facets. I know they're so pretty, right? Because I'm deciding. Is this the one? So this is fantastic. They have a little stamp on there. My one thing with this is that it is quite a significant step down. And this is, I will say, pretty sharp around here, which I was sad about at first because when I Okay, I have to hustle soon. It just shows that it's gonna be a 21 minute drive um, and my, my battery died for a second. What I have practiced with this, it's kind of finding the silver lining because I love this pen so much. I kind of have a death grip when I hold my pens and I don't hold my pens properly. I've had a number of people on the internet tell me how poorly I hold my pens. I'm sorry, um, but I hold my pens like this with like the little grip over. I don't hold it like this, but it's making me it's forcing me to have a lighter grip. And because the nib is so fantastic, it's writing beautifully. In here, I put um, the Blushing Mushroom by Ferris Wheel Press, and I think this is the best combo of pen and ink. Um, it's, it's absolutely gorgeous. I think I've covered everything. I didn't get a, a lot of accessories because I had just gone to Japan. I got my Kakamori dip pen. I got so many Traveler's Factory things. So I was really focusing on pens, pen makers, nib grinds, and inks, and the experience. And it was an A+. Plus. I will definitely go back to Florida next year. Um, I would love to get to more shows because it was just so much fun. They canceled the one in Boston, which was supposed to be this upcoming weekend, which is such a bummer because that's my location. So hopefully the Commonwealth pen show will come back next year. I'll have Orlando. And I have the Dutch show on my brain in June. I think that's a good time of year for me. No birthdays or holidays or anything. I think I might go out to the Netherlands and hang out with Joost Appleboom for that pen show and maybe DC. So, so much fun. I'm sorry I went on forever. I hope you enjoyed this video. Like and subscribe if you'd like to see more from me. I will be coming back soon, sharing with you Currently Inked, coming back with some Japan hauls, and I'm also due to do an updated 
collection, which has grown quite a bit. I did one six months ago, so I think I'm gonna to try to get one done by the end of the month. Let me know if you've ever been to a pen show, how your experience was, and um, let me know what your favorite pen is today. What are you writing with today? Thank you guys so much. I love this pen community, and I will be back soon with another video. Thanks everybody, and thanks to everybody who I met at the Orlando Pen Show and who made me feel at home. All right, I'm off to have a tooth extracted. Fun, fun, fun. I had to have a little fun in my day before I went off to do this awful thing. Okay, bye everybody. All right, I'm here at Hello Tello Studio with yes. John. Hey, John. Hi, how are you? Thanks I'm, for coming. I'm doing great. Tell us a little bit about your pens here. So our pens are a little bit different design. We use a very streamlined, flush design. We use a small cap. We oh, use wow, box that nibs. Is so cool. But, That's a cool polish on that yeah, too. Yeah, but what makes ours different is we use Venetian glass and we inlay it up at the top. So each one has a complementing glass colors that complements the material. That's gorgeous. And wow. So that's wow. kind of our signature in our pens. I love that. So beautiful. The white. These are so pretty. I love the flush. Thank you. Yes. But yeah. Thank you. So we're here at the show and check us out online if you can't come. And they have great stickers too. Yes. <laughs> All right. Thank you, John. Thank you. <laughs> Enjoy the show. Okay. I'm here with Abby from Maverick Pens. Hi, Abby. Hi. We were just saying that this is both of our first pen shows, so. We're very excited to be here. In I'm a smidge overwhelmed. Uh, yes, for sure. <laughs> In a great way. Of, uh, oh. our daughters, Evelyn. Hi, Evelyn. Uh, my husband, John, is the one that turns all of the pens, and I make all of our blanks, all the pretty colors. My she's job. in charge of the colors. I'm in charge of the colors. And she's done a great job. Yeah. These are just beautiful. I love this one. Um, we're a veteran-owned business. My uh, husband was in the Air Force for 12 oh, years. So. Wow. These are just beautiful. How long have you been in the pen business? We've been making pens for around four years now. Wow. It's a labor of love, huh? It is absolutely. And each pen, because we pour all our blanks, is totally unique. They're all kind of one of a kind because the resin likes to do its own thing. Like sure. Evelyn, do you have a favorite? What's your favorite pen? Um, my favorite would be... Oh, that one's so pretty. You have good taste. Love it. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. I hope you have a good show. Thank you. Dolphins. Oh, beautiful. This is Adolphus. Adolphus. That's right. Your pens are beautiful. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. I have my eye on this tray right here. I do really like this one a lot. That one's beautiful. They're all so pretty. And the, this is made out of. This is celluloid. Oh, it is celluloid. That's beautiful. This is Sean with London Pens, who's been a total trooper, because let's read his sign. His pens are on a truck, lost somewhere in Florida. Poor thing. He's going to do a virtual sale. So he's London Pens out of Canada. He lost out on a lot of sales this weekend, and he's been smiling all weekend. Thanks, Sean. Thank you. Good luck.